Okay. All right. We're back. I'm back. I apologize for any background noise there may be. I got somebody who wants to watch my broadcast, but I'm not sure I'm ready to let that happen. <laughs> so I guess I'll just load. I'm not entirely sure exactly where I was. Let's find out. Oh, writing a poem. Hint, you can use the skip button to fast forward through text you've already read. Okay, cool. But I haven't read any of this new text. I literally stopped it right here. Sunset. Passion. Oops. <laughs> Electricity? Oh. Insight. Hmm. Uncontrollable. Oh, wow, jeez. I'm doing a lot of things that make Yuri happy. Anxiety. <laughs> I've got that. Fluffy. There we go. Clouds. After image. Determination. <laughs> this fills you with determination. Have it. Kawaii. Kawaii. Daydream. Intellectual. Infinite. I like that. Doki Doki. <laughs> Chocolate. Music. Yay, Sayori's happy. I'm really trying to not talk too loud, but how about boop again? That's another one that like Natsuki Ewa. Natsuki likes. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable over here. Wait, I've gotten a little, little uh, see? Oh, right back to the I can't read thing. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the last couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Light. Yo, Sayori. <laughs> That's great. That's how I talk. Yo. Looks like you're in a good mood today. Hehe. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. Get used to it. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh? That's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh, uh, why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. Just wanted to look at it. Is it pretty? Does it have, like, little cats and bows and stuff? Ah. Uh, Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and get to get it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, caught me right-handed. I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. <laughs> Yikes. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that leaves only one option. <laughs> Aww. I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Jeez, my character's rude. Ah ha ha. Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Creep. Get out of here. Her face is in a book, as always. Ah! I wasn't listening or anything. Totally weren't. I was just... It was just something in my book. Right, sure it is. Yuri! <laughs> Tell Light to let me borrow some money. <laughs> That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. <laughs> look at the look. She's just like... I will tell you how it works. I love it. And frankly, after putting, pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough re retribution. Jeez, everybody's being rude to her today. Dot dot dot. Uh, did I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed in my book. 
Uh. <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't help him. It, it doesn't help him. It doesn't happen <laughs> much, but it's a fun side of you. That's. There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did some something bad. I almost said I did some bad. I did some bad. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. <laughs> I wanted to make sure I was actually reading that right. Retribution. That. Still coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside of all of us, isn't there? Hehe. <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But... You wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. <laughs> Something tells me it wouldn't have taken much. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. Hehe. <laughs> Wap? What the hell was that? Yeah! Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Did you see that? Like, f it flashed. Ow! What was. Eh? A cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Ooh, that sounds good right now. Sayori glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution! <laughs> oh my god. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I love it. Ahaha. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. Ahaha. <laughs> Natsuki! <laughs> That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Siri hugs the cookie. Aren't you supposed to just eat it? Why would you hug it? Jeez, just eat it. Okay, yeah, that goes hand in hand with what I just said. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Oh, show good, sorry. Oomph. Sayori suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. <laughs> That's great. You're gonna... You're going through... Bleh. You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, uh, yours looks really good too, Nasuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why did you think I gave you that one? <laughs> Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. Hehehe. <laughs> Sari gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki and then wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Um, Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Oh, hey! Did you seriously just do that? Hee hee hee. I don't know. Mouthful Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Oh? Ugh. Where's Monica, anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. <laughs> of course I wouldn't. I'm just, like, the side person here. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had to do something today. She's pretty popular, after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... Aha, I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Oh, damn. <laughs> Natsuki's beast. Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Jeez, she sounds like me. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. <laughs> but boyfriend? <laughs> what on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind that. Well, I'll you up anyway. Sayori's still stuck on, like, what? Ah. Well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. 
Aha. Uh -huh. That makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware that you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't really. I just kind of started recently. I always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! <laughs> you should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'm just like, yeah, whatever. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Light. Well, thank you. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah. I, you know, when she does that, it looks like she's trying to take up the whole screen. Like, she's trying to, like, you know, like, you guys get out of my way, I'm here. Like, she's the president. And obviously very popular, so she wants that to be known. I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <clears throat> Aha, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? Not really. <laughs> Just Natsuki and freaking Sayori fighting over cookies. I choose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. Yeah, probably for the better. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished the, her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book, and Natsuki disappears into the closet. Hey, Yuri. Eh? Ah. I suddenly noticed that Yuri is reading a different book from the one we were reading together. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Ah, no. I was kind of just waiting for you. Ah, if that's the case, why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small pitcher, water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with the filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an, ele an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk and then we'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appear appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. I might as well walk, w walk with you. Wow. Yeah, why not? Shall we go then? Yeah. Hmm, where are you two off to? Uh, we're just... Yuri was gonna go make some tea, so... I suddenly realize how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We're just filling the water pitcher. Ah, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. It's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? That's... Monica, please mind your own business for once. Oh, dang. Or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve light in club activities? Eh? Exclamation point. My mouth gapes. I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> then let's go, light. Ah. Yuri quickly exits the room and I follow. That was weird. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri. I just... Something about the way she said that. It made me feel so irritated. What's wrong with me? <laughs> Nothing. She's being rude. No, Yuri. I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but... <laughs> It's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. Like, how come even when I do something bad, you're being nice to me? Because nothing that you do is as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We all have, we have emotions and we can't always hide them away. But you always amplify things in your head. 
Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. <laughs> now I know why Yuri is my favorite. Ah. No. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. Right? Oh my god. What kind of friend would do that? Friend, you say? Yeah, um... <laughs> Yuri lifts her head. Like... I really like being friends with you. Haha. <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you, too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that. But I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway. Ye uh, yeah. <laughs> Shall we go? Yeah. Yuri and, I walk to our to Yuri and I walk to the nearest water fountain. Once we fill up the water pitcher, we return to our classroom. Like, do you feel- what? <laughs> like, do you like oolong tea? Uh, sure I do. I don't even know what that is. Uh, yeah. Anything is fine. <laughs> Very well. Yuri sets the temperature of the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less- wait, I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything. <laughs> In that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Ah, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show, and you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around, anyway. Uh, that's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me late. It's very endearing. Aww. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. <laughs> I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Might I have another request? Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Uh, why is that? It's a little bit easier on my back. Okay. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Ah, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I, regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because my, ugh, it's most likely because my oh god, uh, my your posture, right? Nice save, light. Nice save, me. Always hunched over like that while reading. Yes, I have terrible reading posture. <laughs> Sweat drop. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieve the book from my bag. I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies that I kept hidden from Sayori Sayori's. Wow, Sayori's candy radar. This is what happens when you try to say a city. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm done. Never mind. I take it since it'll go well with the tea. Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Exclamation point. Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? I don't know, get your mind out of the gutter and just freaking read the book? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Oh, Jesus. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch your chest. This is, this is turning into a... Like, not... Whatever, anyway. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. Well, that's good. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all my willpower to focus on reading. Dot dot dot. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Ah, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. 
Uh, that's, that's okay. I won't take any. Eh, are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then it might smear the puts. <laughs> it might get smudges on the pages. Ah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading from it. It's like show and tell. But as a result, she's so pretty. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on the top of my leg. Ooh, la la. Well, in that case, Yuri is already totally focused on, re on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then I take another chocolate and I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. Ew, what are you trying to do? I apprehensively- <laughs> Apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. <laughs> what? Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did- Did I just- Yuri looks at me like she needed to confirm what just happened. Um. Light. Sorry. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Ah, uh, that's... well... You were just helping. That's something that friends do, right? I mean... Not really in this kind of context, but... yeah. That's all it was. Yeah. Then... You don't need to stop or anything. <laughs> Jeez. I see. The situation has gotten really tense. Uh oh Oh. I accidentally right-clicked. Yuri tries to return the book. Yuri tries to return to the book. But I can tell just by her expression that even she can't focus now. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers. But this time Yuri's eyes meet mine. Dot dot dot. How did it even come to this? <laughs> I don't know. You guys are pervs. Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breaths. I raise my arm. Ah. Like before, Yuri parts her lips. But it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. Okay, everyone. Jeez, I was gonna say, that's starting to get kind of... Whatever. Whoa. Ah! Yuri jolts back. Oh, the music's back now, too. The other music was, like, so quiet. It's time to share poems. Let you can help Yuri put the tea stuff away, right? Yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. <laughs> I'll... Just, I'll take care of the cups. <laughs> yeah! Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. I get the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. <laughs> Who should I show my poem to first? I was... I don't... I'm just gonna go in order, I guess. Siori. Dot dot dot. Ooh! I like this one, like... It has some nice feelings in it. Ah, I'm glad. Does this mean it's better than yesterday's? Mm, let me think. I don't know. <laughs> I guess I like them both. <laughs> That's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is pretty important. Is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> what? <laughs> that makes no sense. Ugh. Why do you? Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Oh, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about you. You need to think about yourself once in a while. I was going to say you need to think about you once in a while, but alright. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep that in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. 
Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking anything sad, Sayori. Oh, something sad, whatever. Well, I like happy the most. <laughs> but sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug. Aww. And make a nice happy rainbow. Sorry, that's unexpectedly poetic. Eh, it is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Light. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like bundles of kittens. Like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. But there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And then I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts. In bottles all in a row. My collection makes me a lot of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off the bottle caps. It just doesn't feel it doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf one after the other. Holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle, but every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile beneath, between my feet. Heavy thoughts, heavy thoughts, heavy thoughts. In shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends. My friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Yeesh. Holy crap. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Siori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being so cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is it came out good and you should be proud of it. Aw, oh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing like... Writing is like magic. Yes, it is. <laughs> You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you can keep it up. Yeah. Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Ah, uh, don't get ahead of yourself. That's sort of a weird statement to make. Sayori, Sayori, ugh, Sayori's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. Amen, sister. I am the same way. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Who should, should I show my poem to next? I said I'd go in order, but I might actually save Yuri for last again, because that was a pretty awkward exchange that we had earlier. <laughs> so let's just go with Natsuki. Hmm. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one, she thinks. But I can't really say it's any better, either. Phew. Huh? Phew what? Well, anything that isn't a train wreck will take us a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. <laughs> that is true. Hey, what makes you... Wait, maybe that was a compliment? Haha, <laughs> glad to see someone recognizes my experience. Sure, that's what you want to call it. Well then, keep practicing and maybe you'll be as good as me someday. That's, uh... 
Something tells me Natsuki completely missed the point. Yeah. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Eh? Uh, you think so? Whoops. What did I just do? Oh, that was weird. Yeah, well, I guess we've been friends with her for so long. You might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Sayori has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so uh, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Ugh, that was a little unnecessary. <laughs> but think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she'd probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say that we take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. <laughs> She's like, here. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. That's pretty shallow. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. <laughs> One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if she... If it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Yikes. That's rude. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think it was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you... You can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Wait, like anyone would agree- Okay, yeah, right. I was right. It just didn't make sense to me. Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my- but That doesn't matter. It could be anything. It could be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid to tell people. Wait, something that if you're afraid people find out, they'll make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy? I think what people really need to learn to respect... I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of people can too. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important. Ah. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow too, so look so look forward to it. Oh, Alright, of course I will. Uh, who should I choose? I'll do Monica. <laughs> Hi again, Light. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Are you telling me that my stuff hasn't already been a masterpiece? So hold on a second. No, I wouldn't count on that. <laughs> you never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Da da da. Alright, this one's good. It feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Hmm. I guess so. I can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most... romantic. That's the best way to describe it. 
She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. Or when she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on inside her. Hey, light! Oh, wait. That is not... I don't... I don't want to... Uh, no, never mind. Forget I said that. Mm-hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get too much... It's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what goes on in that head of hers. I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. It just meant that I wish she wouldn't keep so much to herself. But still, defending her like that... You must be pretty into her. Eh? You completely misunderstood. Ah, calm down, I'm kidding. No, you're not. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Wait, really? Yeah, a fictional one, anyway. <laughs> Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but... Well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying. But anyway. Want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do, too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Ow. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Um. Load me. Save me. Load me. That's like computer terms. That's pretty cool. A lot of this actually seems like it could be computer related so she's a nerd like me hmm it's even more abstract than your last one huh ha ah, I guess it's just the way I write I'm sorry if you don't like it no I never said that it's just it's just a kind of thing I never I've never seen before I guess I kind of like playing with my space on the paper choosing where and how to spa space your words can totally change the mood of a poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. Aha. Uh -huh. Sometimes asking what a poem about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult situation. Sorry, difficult decision. I can't read. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. All right. You never know when you might change your mind. I'll keep that in mind. I don't know what to think of this. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? Haha. <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. What the hell? I guess I'll save. Because that's what it says to do. And then she even starts second-guessing if she's talking about writing or not. What the hell? Yuri. Lovely, lovely Yuri. Let's see what you've written for today. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, 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 dot. That's not good. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Oh, crap. Do you like it? Like... This one might be better than- this one might even be better than yesterday's. Well, that's what I've been kind of going for. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practice practicing. 
Maybe that's why you did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. Yuri, Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine. Take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah. Just being appreciated like this, I guess. It's probably... It probably sounds really stupid. But seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying that you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Aww. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides... People would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? Dot dot dot. Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway. Do you want to share your poem you wrote today? Yeah. I do. If it's with you. Oh. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. <laughs> bread is awesome. <laughs> my attention was caught by the scuttering, scu yeah, scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an ordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of my of bread. Sorry, my subconscious, well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon is that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto this newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlonian conditioning. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. Um. It was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. <laughs> it's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't even begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me and indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's these sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Huh, that's funny. That does have a question mark. Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? About someone being ridiculed for a strange interest? Eh. Uh, she did. Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She's right. I mean, does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two have that in common. That's, well, that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Uh, please don't tell her I said that. <laughs> uh, don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now. But I'm glad that you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Writing, listening. There really aren't many people like you, Light. That's exaggerating a little bit. It's just how I feel. I never thought I would feel so comfortable sharing my writing. 
but now I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. And you're to thank for that. Aww. It's nothing, really. Yuri smiles sincerely at me. For just one- for just a moment, her timidness seems to disappear. <clears throat> okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if we could all come sit in the front of the, of the room... Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? <laughs> it's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. <laughs> I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't much- we, wow. We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? P <laughs> um, Monica. Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're all also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Siori's putting it all on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Hehe. <laughs> Siori, Sayori, who has been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think that's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys? No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. Dot dot dot. But! I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. We start the event and each put on a good performance. Then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah. It's about expressing your feelings. Being intimate with yourself. Finding new horizons. And having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to, sing the, the, to find uh, the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of a room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. <laughs> Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. <laughs> Even Sayori sort of like, uh. Sayori looks worried. I just said that. <laughs> I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least you can do is help them out a little. Well, maybe, but... Dot dot dot. It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Ugh. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Dot dot dot. Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. Sigh. I guess I don't really have a choice. Haha, <laughs> that's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to, cho to, choose, uh, to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No way! Monica! This is too sudden. 
Well, if you can't recite in your poem in front of the club, then how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a bit more comfortable. Can I go next? Uh huh, of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to a specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. <laughs> Mona begins, Moni, Mona? Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inf inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to play emotion behind each line, so she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Siori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recita recitation. Yeah. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica! Uh, thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Siori? Uh, I'll go next. Ua. Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stand up, stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri! Say <laughs> It's so cute. It's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts, to, starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words tra transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure so that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside of her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she would be bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save this situation. Damn, why do I keep doing that? I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me after and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her. We were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. Yeah, sure, that's an excuse if I've ever heard one. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. <laughs> Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. <laughs> okay, I guess I'm next then. Siri so hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah. Ahaha. <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. Hehehe. <laughs> Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah. Try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine that you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best way. The best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Siori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. Serene and bittersweet. If I were <clears throat> to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said that she likes my poems. It's like... I get to read more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! <laughs> good job, Sayori. He even light liked it. I guess that's a good sign. So what does that what does that even mean? <laughs> it came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them depending on what you're reading. 
Oh, I know what you mean. That's... Well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. Hee <laughs> hee. <laughs> the next time I'm gonna make you pick a poem that challenges you a bit more. That's real nice of you. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay! Now, who's next? Hatsuki? <laughs> She's not happy about this. Don't make me go before light. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well just light... Might as well just let light lower everyone else's standards before I have to do it. Hatsuki? It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that will improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. This poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because <laughs> you're reciting a poem in front of us. Smart one. Because you're presenting. <laughs> Yes. Huff. Humph. When I say huff. Humph. Humph. <laughs> anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. Once she's unenthused, her poem has rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She hops back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Uh, well, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. <laughs> when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I want... Well, sorry, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making more... Sorry, I'll be making pamphlets to let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find another, some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort in the club. It makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up. Let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. <laughs> it's like you're cheering yourself on. Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club, and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Hehehe. <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Light. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's just go already. I woke home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. 
Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. Like, I like how we get to... I mean, Sayori fumbles with her words. So let's just say that one day Yuri asks to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> well... Probably for a nice change of pace, I'd walk home with Yuri just once. Why not? Walking home with Yuri, huh. Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? Oh, okay. I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialize, I'd feel awful turning her down, so... Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with what I just said. Haha, <laughs> you admitted it. Jeez. There's not any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know? Need you? Sayori. I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm. If you say so. The conversation trails off and I'm left feeling awkward. But it was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I just- I can't just lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take it away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Alrighty, so now it's time for... Alright, I'm, I'm actually gonna stop this now. Um, until then, yeah, I'm, I'm out of here. Have a good day and night, whatever it is where you are, and I will be back soon with another episode of this, and hopefully even more soon as well with more FNAF 6 Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Simulator or whatever the case is, because I really want to try that. I really want to try to, like, get more from it. But anyway, yeah, until then, I will see you... Next time, have a good day, night, right over where you are, and I'll be back to blah!